Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Kaylee and today we are going to talk all about episode 4 from season 6 of Outlander. Now this is going to be a bit of a recap. If you haven't seen it, it will contain spoilers. So if you're not prepared for spoilers, then maybe click away. But if you are all about spoilers or you have already seen this episode, then stick around. Today's video is definitely one that you're going to enjoy. Can you believe we are already halfway through this season? It has gone in a blink of an eye. This season is going to be over and I'm just, oh, it's scaring me. We've got a lot of storyline to cover if we're going to fit this entire book into this very short season, which I don't think we're actually going to. I think it's going to have a bit of a cliffhanger ending for the season and then we're going to jump straight into um the re remainder of the book in season seven and because it's longer we're going to get that sort of offset of this book into season seven but who knows because we know that the writers throw us a few curveballs especially us book readers and there's a few little bits and pieces that have changed so I'll be very excited to see what is actually changed towards the end of the season airing I'm, I'm very excited for that one but let's jump straight into today's uh, episode which was a lot about young Ian. Now the episode starts and we see young Ian and he is at the Mohawk uh, camp or settlement whatever you call it and he's sort of gone he's gone through the initiation and now he is becoming one of the um, uh, Indian family members basically. So you see him having his uh, hair cut off and it's explained to him that the uh, white man's blood is being washed away from you. You are now one of us. Welcome welcome to the family. It's such a really cool way to jump into this episode and you definitely know that at this point we're going to see a lot of young Ian which is fantastic. On a side note, young Ian or um, uh, John Bell, he is so skinny. I did not realise because of the costumes and the the amazing like details that go into the show I never realized just how skinny he was and I it totally blew my mind because we definitely see a lot of young Ian in this episode <laughs> episode I have talked about how Jamie and Claire do seem to be having less sex scenes and we do know that Katrina during this time was pregnant so maybe the actual logistics of filming sex scenes with Jamie and Claire was just going to be too much of a hassle to throw in too many during this season to try and help her keep her privacy intact uh, in regards to the baby so I was really shocked when we had not one but two sex scenes in this episode. The first one, though, had a fantastic line about Grease Lightning from Jamie, which I just, I absolutely loved. I, of course, we know Grease Lightning, in my mind, jumps straight to the movie of Grease. But, yeah, I just love that there's some little future ties in, sort of, I don't know. I just like these, they're kind of like Easter eggs, and I just love them. Greased Lightning, huh? <gasps> what? Ooh. Me. Jumping back to the young Ian storyline in, in regards to this episode, though, we see at this point the love and the connection is starting to grow between him and uh, young Emily. Now, it's such an interesting concept because he obviously calls her Emily because he can't pronounce her name. And it's... Uh, the costuming throughout for Emily throws me a little bit because I do believe it's just not, I mean, I don't know properly, but to me as a, like, I don't know enough to have a proper judgment, but just as a TV, well, I didn't think her costume sort of fit. I, I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong and that's totally fine. Which is, that's just a personal opinion, but her costuming is a little bit odd to me. Anyway, um... Having her come into it and you see how their love grows pretty instantly, we then find out that they get married and then we of course find out that um, poor Emily lost not one but two children and it's just absolutely heartbreaking for everybody involved obviously but of course young Ian and Emily especially. Um, it's then, it's so, it's just 
it's so connecting for people that it just it's absolutely heartbreaking but instead of bringing them together it definitely tears them apart and for young Ian it's absolutely devastating when he finds out that a couple of months after the loss of their second child Emily has decided that it's probably best for Ian to leave because it's just not happening and their connection isn't strong enough their spirits are battling every time they conceive a child and young Ian's is losing that is the um uh what's the word the beliefs or whatever for the Mohawk tribe for pregnancy I explain that horribly so you know give me some slack there but it's just absolutely devastating for young Ian as he's pretty much told hit the road mate you you gotta leave and I just oh my my heart broke for young Ian as you watch him sort of head off back to Jamie and Claire Where you're going? Leave. Leave. We also meet Alexander Cameron in this episode. Now, obviously when he arrives, he is just a burst of energy. He is attempting to sort of work out some dealings with the Cherokee tribe, but unfortunately for him, the Mohawk tribe have also arrived at the exact same time and are doing sort of different dealings with the Cherokees and it's just not fitting in with what Alexander Cameron is after or what he's trying to achieve. Now, he does openly seem happy at Ness, sort of, a little bit. I don't know, my first initial reactions of TV show Alexander Cameron were a bit like, ooh, okay, you're nice, what's going on here? And then we get a bit further into the episode, and we see he doesn't really play by the rules. You must be Mr. James Fraser in the flesh. Alexander Cameron. When they call Scotchy. Aye. But as I said, some of the Mohawk uh, tribe members have arrived at the Cherokee tribe lands. So at this point in time, of course, Jamie and young Ian are there and young Ian learns that, I can't remember his name, but the guy from the Mohawk tribe has now pretty much uh, wed and is now with Emily and they have a son of their very own. Of course, this upsets young Ian immensely. But during sort of a confrontation with him, Alexander Cameron jumps in and gets involved because remembering he's got this sort of back thought in his mind about the fact that the Mohawk tribe is, you know, he's, they're upset. he's upset with the dealings that are happening. You know, he's got his own agenda here. It's not as if he's coming to young Ian's aid. He's sort of just involving himself because he's drunk and he knows that he needs the Mohawk gone. But of course, throughout their battle, we see him just he he's just he doesn't do correct anyway they have the uh good old jewel and he tries to cheat luckily though young ian is a amazing character and jumps in and saves the young mohawk gentleman oh bear killer you came why these lads were a scalp lock there it's a taunt to their enemies makes it up ready He turned early. Please put it in the comments below what his name is because it's, oh, it's annoying me that I don't know. Like, I should absolutely know what his name is, but I don't. So I'm very sorry. Um, obviously, <laughs> I, I'm in love with young Ian. Uh, it's blowing my mind that the entire episode was really, really dedicated to him, though. I thought we'd have a few more chops and changes with different things and I mean we did have a few little moments where Claire was using the ether on Lizzie and Je Jezemiah but it just wasn't much there really wasn't much going on in the rest of the world in regards to Outlander it was really all about young Ian she doesn't feel it Mr Fraser says we could cut someone quite open slice into them and get out what's ailing them they wouldn't feel a thing. A scene that I also love in this episode is the fact that Brie has now told Jamie all about everything that happens to the to the Indians in America. And he, he, it's obviously a conflict inside himself because it's like, does he tell them? Does he warn them? How can he help? What does he do? 
And once he is back with the Cherokee leaders, he does in fact tell him about what is going to come. And in 60 years, your ancestors are going to be pushed off your lands and killed. And it's just an, a horrendous time. And he gives him that uh, forewarning. I mean, we know from previous seasons, nothing, I don't believe anything is able to actually be changed. I think it's all set its course. And the fact that Claire, Brie and Roger are all in the past is actually what is making all of these moments play out. It's like Claire had to be at uh, Culloden for it to happen. Like, I do believe this is how it's all playing out. I have, I think they have absolutely no hope in changing any futures <laughs> For any storylines, I mean, who knows, but I just don't believe they're going to be able to change anybody's future. So, I, Jamie obviously giving him the warning is, it's amazing. And it was, I'm so glad that he did because it just proved the character of Jamie and how much of a loyal friend he is. But also, is it going to change anything? Are we going to have any difference? I don't know. But I do really appreciate that he told him. And mind you, he, the Cherokee leader, he was just like, okay, thank you very much. I believed him straight out. You know, went with the whole, <laughs> your wife uh, is amazing for telling you how much did she, did she cost you. And I loved this quote. I loved it. And it was just, I think it was, um, she cost me, she almost cost me everything I have, but she was worth every cent or something like that. I absolutely loved it. My heart melted again at that point. But I can warn you, you should not go to this new place or fight. But when the time comes, your people must hide. If you have, did you pay a great deal for her? She cost me almost everything I had. She was worth it season though has obviously been a lot about the Christies and there was not going to be an episode where I don't think we get a little bit more information about at least one of the Christies and at the very end of this episode we see Jamie and Claire having their second sex scene uh, for the episode and of course you know it's all getting hot and heavy for them they're having a good time then we see a creepy little stalker woman standing at the barn window or the barn doorway having a good old perv and we see that Mulva has made herself right at home getting right up on her tippy toes so she can see everything that is happening. Now if you don't have creepy vibes by from Mulva yet uh, we're on really different creep levels because to me she is just she's doing a fantastic job at creeping me out. And I mean, obviously I'm a book reader, so I know what the storyline entails and what is coming. But just the way that it has been playing out and the way that it has been written with the Christie's involvement in this, ep in this season, sorry, has been fantastic. I've loved every moment of the Christie's being in this season. And not because of the characters that they play, but the way it's actually been portrayed across the episodes. Like, I guess this will be a subject that we talk about more at the end because I don't want to give away any spoilers in case you are only a TV viewer and you haven't watched, uh, sorry, read the books or whatever. So I'm going to keep this one as spoiler-free as possible. But at the end of the season, we'll definitely have to discuss about the fact that the Christies are being, their storylines are being portrayed so well, in my opinion. Absolutely amazingly. I hope not too tired. I do also have some very, very exciting news to share with you all here on our Outlander YouTube community. I'm unable to share it today in this episode because there are still a couple more things that need to be locked into place. But I am definitely able to tell you that a brand new series will be starting here on the channel that I'm... Uh, look, I was excited about season six. I was excited about um, Go Tell the Bees that I am gone coming out. But this next series that I have ready for Outlander content has blown both of those out of the water for me. 
I, I like I said I can't actually say it but I cannot wait till I can tell you guys and share my excitement because it is something that you, I really hope that each and every one of you who watch my Outlander videos are going to enjoy and get a bit of a inside of view on some stuff that's happening in my life in regards to Outlander content. I hope that, I, I hate being that person. I watch YouTube videos all the time and I think to myself, just say it, don't, but I can't. And my excitement levels are through the roof and I just wanted to put it out there that something cool is coming. So if you haven't hit that subscribe button, please consider doing so. It definitely does help the channel grow. And I will see you very shortly for another Outlander video. I hope everyone's having a great day and I'll see you then. Bye. All that was me is gone.